So welcome to End User Tools Presents. The, this will be both Asian Gypsy Moth and European Gypsy Moth training on data collection using ArcGIS field maps as the mobile application. I'm Jenny Sauer. I'm the training lead for End User Tools Group. We're going to go on a little bit of a fast-paced ride here today. I'm going to go ahead and end the poll. So last minute, three, two, one, and end. I asked you to tell me how you prepared for this course because I want to make sure that we are on the right track. Basically, this course should pick up the last rung of a ladder if you were climbing it, or if you think of back to maybe gym class in high school, climbing that rope, all this, all this training will do is tell you how to ring the bell at the top on the ceiling. Um, and hopefully you've had a lot of help up that up that ladder or up that rope. And I see that lots of you, I'm just gonna share the results so you can see each other's answers. Lots of you took advantage of some training on this new Field Maps app, so that's excellent. If you have not, I would encourage you to do so. If nothing else, it'll make you feel confident using a new app. Many of you um, decided to study survey protocol, feel comfortable with the iPad, and maybe some other things, some other courses or some other training that's involved normally at your field office. I'm going to go ahead and close that up, but thank you for doing that for me. Um, and welcome. I see um, a lot of familiar faces here, and I, I see some very well behaved people with their their selves, uh, everybody's on mute and everybody's being very quiet. We're going to go pretty fast, but I do want to make sure that you have resources you need if you have questions. Every year, End User Tools Group consults and refreshes the map and the data form for Gypsy Moth survey data collection. There are two for Gypsy Moth at this point that we'll talk about, as I said, one for Asian Gypsy Moth and one for European Gypsy Moth. We're talking about them together today, but these are two separate maps. Be sure you're in the right map that you're collecting data on the right bug. You can see the picture here. We've got two different moths and you know which one you're collecting data on by asking your supervisor. So I'm not going to tell you which one to collect data on, but I will show you briefly how they differ. And um, your national operations manager, Anthony Mansung Hing, is responsible for communicating things like survey protocol requirements. So this training, like I said, is your quick stop to make sure you understand how to use the application as it was designed to collect data for Gypsy Moth. So you're going to make your supervisors have, happy. I know that some of you are told to come here, but also satisfy your curiosity and hopefully reduce any worries and build some confidence. So in short, we're going to make sure that you're able to do your job well this year. There's two quick resources that I want to make sure you are aware of. The first being this mobile data collection tools website. I'm going to put these links in the chat in just a moment. Basically, there are three little steps here. The top half is all documents that will help you, and the bottom half is all a video gallery. If you want to find foundational training, you'll find the iPad field maps and survey one, two, three trainings here for you to go through. The pest program specific training, what we're doing today, will show up here. So if you need a review or someone missed it, that's where this training today will show up once it's complete. You have pest program specific training documents. So both Asian Gypsy Moth and European Gypsy Moth have documents here at the ready for you. Going back, there is also a training events page, which lists all of the training that you can participate in this year. Some of you may have found the Gypsy Moth training this way. There are a couple other offerings, so they will be repeats of today's course on April 5th and May 24th, so you just come right on in and watch it again if you want to or pass that on. The one I really want to point out for you, which hopefully will be of help and is new this year, is the End User Tools office hours. This is kind of like coming in to see the professor. Hop in, hop out, hop in, ask your question, leave or stay and ask lots of questions, whatever you want. But there's an hour every Monday, starting next Monday through the end of June. So the busiest survey season has end user tools supporting you with an hour every week, just sitting there waiting for your, for your questions. So that's a great way for you to stop in and ask those questions, especially if we miss something today. In addition, Gypsy Moth Training Today has a quiz. And I'm gonna stick this link in the chat right now because what I really don't mind is you opening this 
quiz and taking it right along with this training. It's really not meant to be difficult and I really want you to be able to test your knowledge as it's come in. It, it can be a little summary for you, but the real key thing is this third question down here, the email address. Be careful how you enter this because when you complete the quiz, you will get an automated email that says you completed this course. That could have a lot of pluses for you if nothing else but to say here's proof that I completed the course and um, for some of you sometimes supervisors want to know that you did it so that's a great way for you to make sure your supervisor sees that you've done it you could put it on your list of accomplishments quarterly um, you can put it in your back pocket you can print it off and put it on your wall whatever makes you happy but these two things are um, our resources here for you so I'm, I'm going to stick that in the chat box right now so that you all have that okay and please do me a favor if someone asks for this later if uh one or any of you would be willing to make sure that th that this gets put back in the chat so that everyone has access i'm going to try to pay attention but i'm just one person um so just jumping in i want to tell you briefly we're talking about asian versus european gypsy moth and really the only difference is in the data form um, this would be the data form for European gypsy moth. It's, it's pretty standard. You fill it out. Um, but the difference here starts about here. So after habitat, between habitat and agency, the Asian gypsy moth data form has a few more. See habitat? Now we've got a few more right there that are collected for Asian gypsy moth. And that's really it. Be sure that you're collecting data on the right moth. And a little hint is if you see these fields, a big hint would be port name for Asian gypsy moth. If you see that field, you may or may not be adding to that field. As you can see, it's not a required field. There's no star there marking it as required. But if it shows up, that should be a big hint. Another big hint would be the map title. And I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit when I show you on the iPad. But I wanted to set your mind at ease. We're going to talk about both of these. Just be sure uh, with your supervisor that you are collecting data in the correct map, whether that's European or Asian. There's really not a lot of difference, except for Asian's got a few more fields that we collect. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about this new app, the Field Maps app. We're going to talk about a new enterprise URL that we are using this year. The, um, the enterprise site moved, so it's really about typing in the correct URL. And also training maps now live in a stage environment. So that's important to be, we're not just talking about being in the right map, we're talking about being in the right portal. So we'll talk about that quickly today. We're going to review the disconnected workflow. Hopefully this is already ground in. We're going to talk about some basic trapping workflow and workflow that's a little bit more specific to Gypsy Moth. We're going to look at the data form. I'm going to show you on my iPad how that looks. And we're just going to kind of pinpoint some caution areas that we want to make sure that you pay special attention to. All right, ArcGIS field maps. ArcGIS Field Maps is Esri's um, is Esri's new map. That's the company that makes it and is really taking over for collector. So we will no longer be using that ArcGIS collector map. If you used collector in the past, though, it's going to look really similar. So that is setting you up for being pretty comfortable using field maps. Why does it look so similar? Well, this is kind of Esri's breakdown, the company. Um, you may or may not have used these five different mobile apps. But uh, what's happening is these five mobile apps are being combined into ArcGIS field maps. And I'm told it's actually built on the code involved in the collector app. And then what they're doing is adding some functionality from these other apps. So again, if, if you use the collector app in the past, it's going to look very similar. And that's that's on purpose. So the functionality should be nearly identical. Also features that uh, may be new to you. Um, our team is going real easy on using them. So we're really trying to make it an easy transition into these um, into this new app. Next up is this enterprise portal. In the fall of last year, 2021, a the APHIS enterprise portal, which you use to sign into our applications, was managed by the company Esri. 
and it's been migrated now to MRP management, which is a good thing for troubleshooting, for access, for speed, for a lot of other convenience factors. And really what this means for you is that when you get to the to signing in to this page, which should look kind of familiar to some of you, and you choose to sign in with ArcGIS Enterprise there, which is what we would tap on within the iPad or iPhone, we're going to enter a new URL. That URL is in your manual. So those manuals that we talked about for Gypsy Moth, it's step through with step-by-step -step visuals for you, but just you want to be aware that you're using the right URL. Going a little further, this is what it looks like. And the way you can tell really the big kickoff is you can see MRP there now. So you can see that MRP is managing that URL, which you used to sign in. So that's important for you to note. Even more important for you to note is this year training maps that end user tools creates, which are which are really a copy of the real map are being held in a stage environment. And how can you kind of tell the difference there? Well, you, I just pointed out that MRP, right, in the enterprise portal. There's that STG in the URL, and that kind of is a shortened version of stage or staging. So our training maps are a copy of the real map, real data, or official data must be collected in the official data site, which is the MRP or USDA MRP enterprise portal. So if you're collecting data, real data, you have to be sure that this URL is used to sign into the field maps application. If you are practicing, and we do want you to practice, I think it was Bob Ross that said anything you're willing to practice you can do. So we do want you to practice. There are training maps provided. You would then sign out of this MRP portal, sign into the stage portal, and locate those training maps. You can play around. You can train someone. In this case today, I will use a training map to demonstrate because I don't want to put real data in it. The key point is be sure that you are in the correct map to collect data. No official data should go in a training map. If you are collecting data in a training map, it's hiding out in a practice area. So do not collect any real data in a training map. Couple ways you know you're in a training map. Number one, you sign in with this stage URL. Number two, all the training maps say training in all capital letters in the beginning of the title. And they are all held in a PPQ end user tools training group. So I'll show you what that looks like. Finally, all of the base maps for training maps are kind of ugly. So there's a little kickoff there. There's no imagery. It's just a plain light gray background. Um, they're pretty easy to identify, but please note it. Official data goes only in the USDA MRP official site. So we'll have to be careful of that this year. Just a quick review of the disconnected mode workflow. This should really look fairly familiar. We talk about it every time we come together and it's in every manual. Basically, just like Collector, the ArcGIS Field Maps application is designed specifically to operate while disconnected. It involves some prep while you're connected to Wi-Fi to download a map area and then disconnect and go on out and collect data to that map area. At the end of the day, returning back to Wi-Fi, you can synchronize the data you collected while you were disconnected back to that portal. A couple trapping workflows that we want to go over with, um, with Gypsy Moth. A basic workflow is the first visit to a location is considered placing the trap, and that's where you take your geospatial location point on the map. And then all future visits are considered trapping activities. Last year, we had kind of a, a pain in the in our booties um, trap activity that we always had to record and install trap activity. That's been relieved um, a little bit this year. So placing a trap inherently tells us that the trap has been installed. And the way that that's done is the field that says installed date. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. Another trapping, trapping workflow that can sometimes trip us up with Gypsy Moth is relocating a trap. In relocating a trap, the trap activities the trap activity needs to be recorded as removed on the original site, and that original site trap status then also needs to be changed to inactive. 
then you kind of walk it down down to the new location wherever that is and start afresh with placing the trap a lot of folks worry that this remove should actually remove that symbol on the map and that is not correct that symbol should remain on the map. It's very important to data capture because in fact, all of the steps of that original trap are recorded. All the trap activities should remain with the last activity of remove. So if you relocate a trap or you remove a trap for any reason or it's missing, its symbol should stay on the map. It should never delete. It's all part of correct and important data capture. So the entire history of that trap and that location is recorded and retained. All right, let's have a look at the iPad. Okay, this is my PPQ iPad. There are probably some apps on here because I use it for testing that are not familiar, but you should see in a PPQ configured iPad, these survey apps and here's field maps. Let's open it right up. And as I said, I'm in the stage enterprise portal. I know that because I know that I signed into it. If I needed to, I'm going to go back. I could go ahead and sign back out by tapping on my profile picture and signing out. Um, I know because I see training, you probably have it popping right out at you. All of these maps start with training in all caps, and that's a very good tip off. And this group here, PPQ End User Tools Training, only appears in our staging portal. So I know I'm in the right portal to play around. I'm not going to be inputting real data. And I'm going to go ahead and open. I've previously downloaded an offline area for European Gypsy Moth. So I'm going to go ahead and open that map and my map area. And I've got some traps here, some little locations that are just test points as I was playing around a little bit. I want to point out a couple things along the top. We have our sync button. We have a layers button. Let's look at the layers. We have uh, last year 2021 trap sites, which is defaulted to off. If I wanted to turn it on and reference it for placement, I could do that. And we have a markup layer, and that's new to field maps, and it's defaulted off. We have a search feature here if we wanted to search for a trap by trap ID. And we have an overflow menu with a few options here. Probably the most important might be the legend, which only shows the legend for the layers that are visible, which this is the only layer I have visible right now. And the markup layer, which there's a whole video on. If you've, for some of you, you've probably already seen it. It could be useful um, for some things. A big caveat with the markup layer, it is private to the device unless you share it. So it's really like a personal notebook um, and is not an official data collection layer. So be careful with that markup layer if you do choose to use it and make sure you're using it with supervisory oversight in a way that makes sense for your office. The data form is accessed by adding or clicking this add button. And the first question for Gypsy Moth is whether the trap is active or inactive. I'm going to go ahead and choose active and show you the data form. And fields that are required have this little gray star after them. And some are not. As you can see, trap site comments, there's no requirement there. I'm going to go ahead and not knowing survey protocol, just kind of fill one out here. The site name, I'll say, I think I'm on number four for a test. A trap ID, I'm going to give it also that. You can see I don't know survey protocol. You just go ahead and tap your choices. And if you should decide that you've changed your mind, tap again, change the choice. I'm going to say agricultural. You can see there's a default here of the agency being APHIS, but if I need to change that, I could say I'm a state cooperator. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to say Jenny S. And I want to show you this install date, which is restricted to this year. So if I go back a little bit, I'll find that I can't choose anything outside of this year. And if I happen to choose the wrong date, if I hit today, it will reboot me to today. And if I want to make sure that I don't accidentally hit it again, tapping it again closes that calendar view. And then you want to go back and check all of your work and make sure that that's in place. As you can say, see, again, this install date covers the first activity, which is install. So it's assumed based on this form alone that that tra trap was installed today. 
and we're doing that together. I'm just going to, for the sake of you being able to see it better, move the point up off my location and update the point. And there's that symbol. And then we'll hit submit. That may be all we do on an initial visit. However, we did go over that workflow of relocate, and I think that might be helpful for some of you. So let's say this one up here needs to be relocated. I'll need to select that symbol. And now that data form is opened. I'm going to need to do to this one two, two data entries, right? So remember the first one is I'm going to have to record a trap activity of remove. That will be the last one. And then I need to update the status to inactive. So to reach the trap activity form, it's either this link button here below, or I can slide up and reach the activities table here. And then I'm going to add an activity. It defaults to monitor, but in this case, we're removing. There's no sample ID. I'm going to put in my surveyor name and I'm going to change the date to today and close that up. Check it over. That looks good. All right. So we've marked the last activity for this trap site as remove. Now we also want to go back to the main data form and update it to an inactive trap. So this is still our activity form. We're going to hit X until we get back to that main data form. Then we're going to hit edit, which we have two options when it's kind of at the top. We've got this pencil here or scrolling to get that edit pencil. And we're going to change the trap status from active to inactive and we're going to submit. So now this trap site has been removed. The last activity was removed and it is now inactive but as you can see the symbol is still there on our map and that's right so then now we would go ahead and walk on over to where we're putting the trap maybe it's over here and we would start all over with the data form by adding here so a couple things now that that i want to point out along the top this sync button has a change when we first looked at it we had two plain arrows and now we've got a little dot at the bottom of the arrow that goes out. So that's kind of a little hint there telling you, you have data sitting on your device waiting to be synced at the end of the day. And not to take the time to sync it, but I do wanna hit this button and point out this auto sync option here, which is not enabled. As you can see, this little toggle switch is off, not blue, we want it off. And that is correct whether you are using an iPhone or an iPad, whether you're connected or disconnected, because the number one reason for a sync not working out is almost always a poor uh, or unreliable Wi-Fi network. So you want to make sure that the machine isn't deciding for you when to sync, when it catches a tiny bit of Wi-Fi or it feels kind of happy and feels like auto syncing. Typically, every 15 minutes is what the auto sync does. You want to make sure that you have control over manually syncing this data. So at the end of the day, when you get home, uh, back to the office, I mean, or to a hotel or wherever you have the ability to do this data sync, you'll hit this sync button and you'll sync now, but at your discretion. So be sure this auto sync is off. All right, so that was a quick whirlwind of what that data form looks like. A couple of caution areas. We hit most of them already, but it's not gonna hurt you to hear it again. Be sure that you are entering real, I put real quote in quotes, but official data in the official MRP enterprise site. And be sure that you use training maps only for training play uh, for, and make sure that you are not ever entering real data in a training map. Uh, use that disconnected data collection workflow. That submit button uh, will give you a little kind of, I didn't show you today, but it will show you if you have failed to complete a required field or if your GPS is not meeting required uh, limits. So if you have, if you hit the submit button and it doesn't work, it's going to give you a messaging now for which which uh, fields you need to fill in and all of that. Be really careful with data collection. It feels like redundant to say, and I know you're all very responsible, but take that extra second when you've completed a form to review it one more time, just one more time before hitting submit. Do that data, data sync daily. Actually, it's a very helpful thing to do before you leave. It's a piece of our kind of before you leave to make sure your disconnected data collection works well. Make sure that you've synced all your data in the morning 
and then do it again at night. It's a two-way data sync. It pulls data in and pushes yours out. And lastly, be careful of that markup layer. It's there. It could be convenient. I would love to hear how you end up using it if you do, but just remember it lives on your device. It is not an official data collection layer, and it is all all your day, your daily diary, really, unless you are able to share it out. So be careful with those points. Even though we've talked over a lot of things to, to pay attention to, you could still need help. Remember, Anthony Mansung Hing is your nom for Gypsy Moth. Reach out to him for any kind of program information. iPad issues, go to CECIT. For instance, if you forget your passcode, you should open a ticket. If you don't see field maps or you have trouble with the field maps app opening correctly or something like that, open a ticket. Portal access is a thing all of in its own. Kind of use this hierarchy, start with your supervisor, but there is more support there for you if you need it. All things end user tools training, go to that mobile data collection tools webpage. Keep an eye on it because it's updated often and new things are constantly being place there for you to support you. Finally, take this quiz. It's really helpful to be sure that you know um, what you're doing and you feel confident and gives you kind of a little quick summary about what we talked about today. Um, and again, the topics were, we talked about this new app, the um, portal versus uh, the official portal versus a training portal to sign into, when to put data where, we talked about the disconnected workflow, we talked about trapping workflows, including relocating a trap. We had a look at that on, um, on the iPad and we walked through some caution areas. This went by really fast. And so we ha have maybe three minutes for questions. I'm gonna check out the chat if you feel more comfortable. You're welcome to place things in the chat, but also please reach out. Um, I'm very happy to try to point you in the right direction. And we wanna make sure that you feel confident knowing where to get the answers you need. So while Anthony is your survey program um, protocol guy, feel free to reach out to me for anything. Thank you.